Hi, I'm Paul New. I am a course developer for Copa University. I'm a lifelong AMP IA and operate a Cirrus Service Center. Today we're going to talk about impulse couplings. The engines we have on our Cirrus aircraft are pretty old technology and the starting process is another part of the old technology. We have magnetos installed, which are really old technology, uh, and they don't change timing, they don't do all kinds of cool electronic things like our cars do. Everything's mechanical. So in the starting process, we have to do a couple of things that we don't have to do on cars with this mechanical process. One is we have to delay the spark for 20 or 30 degrees so that that spark occurs after top dead center, otherwise the engine will try to turn backwards. And the magneto needs to turn at a pretty fast rate to create a nice bright spark. So I have a magneto here, um, and this is it. It's nice and heavy. It's got a big coil on the inside. And right here we have the impulse coupling. And in the center is the shaft that actually goes through the magneto. So what we're going to do is we're going to be rotating this magneto, I'm going to turn it backwards for the moment. And you can see that the impulse coupling housing is rotating as well as the shaft in the center. But if I turn it in its direction of rotation, it gets to a point right there where if I continue, the impulse coupling rotates, but the shaft does not, or the magneto does not. That's the delay. But inside this housing, as you can see on our graphic to the right, is a large coiled spring. So when the, the impulse coupling rotates but the shaft is not, we're winding up that spring and then we hit a point where mechanically we knock the paws off the little posts that are down in here and we'll hear this click and we'll see the shaft rotate really fast like this. That'll happen three times per propeller revolution. So we have three fires per revolution because we have a six cylinder engine. So I'll do it again. Now, anytime the magneto is not grounded, meaning the P lead, which is connected here, you'll hear mechanics talk about the P leads, uh, grounding this effectively shuts the magneto off. If you're old enough uh, and you had to use the old push lawnmower, and you may remember that there was a little metal tab by the spark plug and to stop the lawnmower, you would use your foot and you would push that little metal tab onto the spark plug and it would it ground it out. That's what the P lead does. And it goes through the ignition switch. So if this is not grounded for any number of reasons, broken P lead wire, switch not switched off, any of those things, the mag can be, we'll call it hot. So if you rotate the propeller, this is happening and this is happening. And the business end is here. So we have one spark plug wire connected to each of these six, uh, each of these six posts. And we fire in order, and they go around. And so we're firing, every time this happens, a spark plug is possibly firing. So when you turn the propeller, you don't ever want to hear that. We have many people that get injured and pass away every year because they turn their propeller and they hear the impulse coupling. You have two magnetos, so you have two impulse couplings that may have this occur. Uh, and you think, I've turned off the ignition switch, so they must be, uh, both mags must be grounded. That's not always the case. As I mentioned, there are several failure modes that can occur that uh, can cause this. So the power that comes out of the back of this is really strong. When I pass this around in class, I will you know, show and tell. Everyone wants to turn it and see what's happening. I make sure nobody holds their hand right here because it can be really exciting. Everybody in the room knows what's happened. You get this jolt, this um, unintentional grunt <laughs> comes out of everybody's, uh, everybody's mouth. But it's real close to a defibrillator. But it's okay, so if someone does zap themselves and something stops beating, we just do it again and it restarts. So, you know, it, it stop, start, we can do whatever we need to with it. Um, but that'll happen in the airplane as well. And it doesn't take very much rotation speed. Matter of fact, 
you can pull it through just barely by hand. So I've, I've got a little short video just so you can see how slow the propeller turns. The impulse coupling clicks. You'll hear the click. It's actually two clicks because we have two magnetos. If you ever hear this sound, you'll know that you just turned the propeller in the wrong direction. So here we'll start the video. Listen closely. Just barely turned it. That's all it takes to start the engine. One or two spark plugs could have fired. There's always air. There's always fuel in a cylinder. And all you have to do is add the third component, which is a spark. And it doesn't take much, and that blade will turn right over it. The engine may not start, but it only has to fire once to do some serious physical damage. There's absolutely no reason that you should ever turn the propeller in that direction. Anytime you need to turn the propeller to connect the tow bar, uh, I don't know, make up any reason you want to for turning the propeller, always turn it backwards. There's zero need to ever turn it in the running direction. So which way is backwards? This is backwards. If you're standing looking at the propeller, it would be a right hand rotation. This is backwards. This is the only direction you should ever turn the propeller. You will never hurt anything. It doesn't do any damage to the magneto. It doesn't hurt any uh, vacuum pump because you don't have those on your airplane unless you have a really, really old one. Uh, even then, there's gonna be no damage to anything. It doesn't hurt a thing and will 100% make sure that you don't get damaged in the process. So there are several components that could cause this failure. Uh, the ignition switch, for one, if you don't have it in the off position, or if there's a failure of the switch, as we see in the legacy fleet for Cessnas and Pipers and those airplanes that are much older than our Cirrus, uh, the key can be extracted from the ignition switch prior to it getting all the way to the off position. That's just a worn out switch. So you may pull the key out and assume it's in off, but it could be in R. So whichever position the key is pointing to is the magneto that's on. So in the R position, the right magneto is on and the left magneto is grounded. So in any of those positions, both L or R, it could be on. Or if a wire has come loose, broken loose, Many of you will test this switch uh, every time when you shut the airplane down, just to be sure it's working. But failures can occur anytime. You also have, you look in the, uh, in the engine compartment, I've got a photo there of the top of the engine looking aft. Uh, there's a lot going on there, a lot of wires, a lot of vibration, heat. That P lead can break off one of those magnetos at any given time. So we don't want to assume that we've turned it off, therefore everything's okay. Turn it off, do everything you can to make sure that it's not engaged, and then never turn the engine in its running direction. Always turn it backwards, and there is zero chance of getting a spark if you turn it backwards. Well, I hope that's helpful and will keep you safe. Thanks for watching. I'm Paul New, and look forward to seeing you on the forums, or better yet, at the next CPPP.